Hey everyone, so today I wanted to go over a few different ways that you could age leather. Uh, this is using vegetable tan leather. I'm not sure how these methods are going to work on anything like chrome tanned or oil tanned. Uh, so I'm just going to show uh, using what I have, which is a dark brown dyed leather and a natural vegetable tan color leather. And for an example of what the three methods are gonna look like, the outcome. I have the first method, which is gonna be used, we're gonna use a candle and felt. The second, which is gonna be used rubbing alcohol, and then the third, which is uh, sanding down the leather. Starting with the first one, uh, which is mainly gonna be used if you have a just a natural color because um, using it on a dyed leather isn't really going to work as well. Maybe on something that's really, really light. But we're just going to show it on the natural color. So we're going to get this stuff out of the way. And so for the first method, we're just going to use a tea candle, the natural veg tan leather, and a felt cloth. Which if you have a felt pad, that'll work a little bit better. But nonetheless, if you have just the cloth, that'll work. Um, also, a lighter will work not as well, but it can be a replacement for the felt, and I'll show you that also. Um, I know I did this method when I made the $15 wallet build. Um, pretty simple. Just get your tea candle and then rub in on the leather wherever you want to darken a bit. And you can start to see right away that the leather will start to darken. Just a small amount, but then when you start to take your felt and really like rub it in, rub in the wax, what you're gonna be doing is burning the wax into the leather and this will kind of just darken it. So after like 30 seconds, you can see like all the wax has kind of melted into the leather and it looks pretty good kind of darkened it a bit to a little bit of a brown tan color and you can add more layers on top of it uh, you're not gonna get too much darker but you can continue to add more and if you don't have a felt cloth you can use a lighter uh, it tends to be a little bit spotty when you do it but it does darken it a bit more than the felt cloth will and I'll show it here. So you can see it just melting the wax into the leather. Which is going to darken it a bit more. But, um, but you can see there's like uneven streak lines in it. Uh, you can kind of clean it up by just taking the rag and rubbing back over it. And that will sort of even it out. See few different kinds but this won't really work too well on a already dyed leather so this one I had previously done and I've added wax on this side and this one has just been dyed and finished you can't really tell a difference at all even if I add another layer it's not really going to show up or make much of a difference. And this is just because there's already dye on it and most likely a finish. So it doesn't really seep in as well. Unlike the natural color, there's a little bit of area that maybe came through a tiny bit darker but it's not really gonna be that much better than just uh, the dye itself so if you already have a dyed piece of leather and you want to add a little bit more character to uh, we can go on to method two which is using rubbing alcohol and you could either do this two ways by pouring some into a little container and then soaking the leather which usually comes out pretty good 
and let me get a piece. So I just have a piece here that I'm gonna drop in and I'm just gonna let this sit for around a minute or two until you start to see the rubbing alcohol change color. Because it is rubbing alcohol, it will dry out the leather. So this piece right here, I had previously done and dunked it into the rubbing alcohol. And it did make the leather a bit firmer. So that's something to be aware about. But the smell of it, the smell of the alcohol did go away after reconditioning it. So the smell isn't going to be too bad. It's not going to like stink up your project. Um, but I think the main concern is the, fir the firmness of it. Which is why you can also opt into just rubbing in alcohol on the top, the top of the grain. And you just want to take your cotton cloth or cotton ball, wool dauber, get some rubbing alcohol. And then we're just going to spread this around on top grain. Just make sure it's pretty wet. And you can start to feel that the finish has come off because you have rubbed it off with the alcohol. So once that's all set up. So this one we rubbed in the alcohol and this one we dunked. So I'm gonna take this out. Just make sure it's not dripping wet. And I'm just gonna let this dry for a minute just so that it's not soaking wet when we start uh, kind of playing around with it. So for both of these, you're just gonna wanna sort of mangle it a bit and it'll help create creases in the leather. With the one that you use the rubbing alcohol on top of it, it's not gonna move as easily because the back of it will still be really dry. So it's not gonna like shape and form as easily as with the one that was dunked. But you can still get some pretty cool textures in the leather. And I usually just like crumple, crumple the leather a bit and then just stretch it back out. And it kind of creates almost natural looking stretch marks. I think this needs some more. And then I'm gonna start doing the same thing with this one that has been dunked. It's not really super wet anymore. You're gonna have some of the dye come off on the hands. So just wear gloves if you wanna avoid that. But I'm just gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna crumple it up and stretch it back out. And you can see like crease marks starting to show up. Uh, they're not gonna be as vibrant as they are right now, just because right now the leather is a little wet. Um, this one where we just put the alcohol on top is pretty much dry. I can put a conditioner on it and uh, it looks pretty good. It's a little bit lighter with some little bit extra creases in it. Uh, but this one, you're going to have to wait uh, probably like a couple hours to dry uh, just because of how soaked it got. For instance, this is one that I did previously. This one's still drying a bit, but I'm just going to let these sit for now. What it looks like. Okay, so we're just going to fast forward a little bit. These two came out pretty good looking. They're both dry now. And they don't really smell at all. And they're not as stiff as they were due to adding the conditioner. But they have a really cool texture in it.
back is still a little rough and it will like I said before it will be a little bit firmer than most of these other ones and in comparison between the one that we rubbed the alcohol on top and the one that we soaked uh, they don't really look similar too much at all this one became a little bit lighter and this one actually got a bit darker but have some but has some lighter spots to it and it really depends on how much alcohol you put on top this one I didn't really put that much and I didn't I couldn't stretch it at all but this one which I did rub on top you can look on the back the back is pretty normal uh, it kind of came out a little bit similar to the one that we uh, soaked So this then brings me to the last method, which is sanding, and it's pretty obvious what you do. You just take the leather and sand it down a bit. Uh, different grits will come out with different textures and different looks. Uh, right here, I have a 100 grit, which I probably would not recommend because it just looks like there's scratch marks all over the leather, and it doesn't really look that good. Um, 1000 grit, which looks a little bit okay. You can see it's just kind of certain areas got hit by the sandpaper while others didn't. Last one, you have a little bit of a comparison between this. This one is a uh, 320 grit, sand it down, and then this one was how the leather was after I dyed it just normally. And you can tell that it definitely had been through some wear on it. But the one thing about this is if you are going to sand down your leather, it does make it a little bit smoother, which could be a plus or a negative, depending on how you look at it. Whereas if you just have regular full grain leather, it's going to have, you're going to feel the creases and the, the marks on it where when you're sanding it down, you're kind of removing all of that. So I guess I'll just show what I would do, which is just take some sandpaper, take a piece of leather, take a piece of leather and then just give it, a, this is a 220 grit, so it's a little bit higher. And just sand it down. This is really good because you can get like specific areas. You might only want the center or around the edges to kind of have this look to it. So it's really easy to control. Same thing with the candle. It's a little bit easier to control. Whereas something with the rubbing alcohol, if you're rubbing it on top of the leather, it's a little bit harder because if you don't rub in the whole surface with alcohol, it, it'll be hard to kind of move around so it won't get really good creases in it you can see that it's pretty light but after you apply the conditioner it'll darken up a bit and not look uh, so out of place so we're back and this is the sanding from what I've just shown after I added some conditioner to it. Looks pretty good. Just lightened up, especially around the edges where I focus most of the sanding on. So I'll just show you a little comparison between, I think 320 grit. This one was a 220 grit. And this one was a thousand. So that's pretty much it. I hope that one of these methods you could use in your next project, uh, whether you have a natural veg tan leather or if you have something that's already dyed or pre-dyed, maybe one of these you can use. Uh, I definitely recommend to test it out a bit, like for the sandpaper. You know, I wanted to try out uh, a couple different 
grits of sandpaper just to see which one I liked a little bit more uh, before I go off and just start sanding a project that I put time and effort into. Same thing with the alcohol. I would definitely test out, um, you know, test how it feels afterwards. But if you really, you know, don't want to change at all the structure of the leather, then I'd probably recommend staying away from dunking it. But putting it on top seems to be okay. The back is still intact and it still has like the same amount of flex, if not a little bit more flex to it. Um, candle, obviously try out if you have a felt cloth. If not, use a lighter. Ed, I wrote an article on this a while ago, so I'll leave that in the description if you just want to read it, read along, or look at pictures uh, on the outcomes that I had. Um, but yeah, thank you for checking out the video. Uh, I want to add more of these tip videos in, in between the maker videos just to change it up here and there. So if you have any suggestions on anything I should kind of go over or, you know, give my advice on, let me know in the comments. Uh, I have some of my own ideas that I'm going to be working on soon. So hopefully they'll be coming out uh, in the near future. But for now, thank you and uh, enjoy your day.